the rabbis say the lost tribes of Israel must return to Israel before the last great world war. Now, all the lost tribes have been found. It's documented next on this edition of It's Supernatural. Centuries have come and gone, offering wisdom and understanding throughout the ages. Today, there should be nothing beyond one's power to discover. And yet the strange, unusual, and mysterious world of the supernatural defies understanding. Stay tuned for a unique and powerful investigation into a curious, undiscovered universe only on It's Supernatural. Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, and I'm here with Rick Amato. The rabbis tell us that the ancient rabbis were looking for three things to happen before the last great world war. The first was Israel had to be a modern day nation. The second was that the lost tribes had to be intact, found, and brought back to Israel. The third was the animal sacrifices in the temple had to be restored. Well, Israel is a nation. They could restore the temple at any moment. But the lost tribes, that's another story. I mean, 2,700 years ago, the Jewish people were scattered to the four corners of the earth. Intermarriage, assimilation, how in the world could these lost tribes be intact? But an Orthodox Jewish man started searching the scriptures about these lost tribes. And Rick Amato, tell me what he found and how he went about this. His name is Simka Yakobovich. He's an Orthodox Jew. He's not a believer in Jesus. However, he's faithful to his faith, which is Judaism. So he read in the book of Isaiah chapter 11, where the prophet said, and it shall come to pass in the last days that the Lord will gather his people, the scattered of his people, the lost tribes of Israel, from the four corners of the earth. And so what he did was he took the cities that were named in Isaiah 11 from thousands of years ago, over 2,000 years yeah, ago. Yeah, but these cities don't exist anymore right, today and, under those names. Right, so he laid down the old cities on a modern map, hmm. and he got a grant from A&E. He's a, he's a tremendously successful filmmaker. He's won two Emmys. I mean, this is a credible hmm. man, and which is a, a great American award for films. And he went to those cities on the modern-day map, the modern counterpart of the Old Testament cities. When he got there, what he, what he found surprised him so much, Sid, that he said the hair on the back of his neck literally stood up. And when I watched the video, the hair on my neck stood up too. Tell, he, me, tell me what he found. Well, when he got there, for instance, just, one, just an example, he picked one of the cities and he went to that city, which is in India now. And he went to that city and when he got there, he found 11 million Hindus, one million Muslims. But tucked away in a remote corner, he found 5,000 people who claimed to be Jews. When he went there, he looked at their flag, and can you guess what the symbol of their flag was? A, a Jewish star? The or? Star of David. Really? And they saw the Star of David, that he saw the menorah, he saw all the practice of Judaism, all, the, all these things, and he said, what, uh, what, are you, what religious book do you use? And they said, well, here, we'll show it to you. And they showed it to him, and it was the Old Testament. It was the Torah. And so he said, who are you? He said, they said, well, we are the Munmasha. He said, Munmasha? He said, they said, yes, that's Indian for Manasha. He said, you're the lost tribe of Manasha. He, they said, lost? We're not lost. <laughs> we know we've been here the whole time. Yeah, you imagine that? There are 10 lost tribes that were scattered because of sin, according to the Jewish scriptures, that after all of these years, what is it, 2,700 20, years? 2,700 years. After two, I mean, you would, look, logic dictates with intermarriage, with being away from Israel, 
uh, there should be no Jew alive on the face of this earth, let alone a Jew that knows what ancient tribe they descended from. How do you account for this? The faithfulness of Yahweh, the God of Israel. He, he, he made a promise in the oldest book in the world, the Old Testament. And what he promised was that the heavens and the earth, the stars would fall from the sky, but he would never forget the covenant he made with Israel. He promised that he would regather them at the end of time before the last world war from the four corners of the earth. Now, there is, some, there is in the video, the lost tribes of Israel, there's some astonishing, and I mean, it just, it really is mind boggling, some archeological evidence that's been ignored. One of the things so important about this video, Sid, is that the press has greatly covered Saddam Hussein's threat to march 300,000 Arabic people to recapture Jerusalem. Well, what they haven't covered is the greatest story never told, and that is that God has carefully preserved his people, and there is archeological evidence to show that the Jews were not assimilated, as many people have believed, but instead they became the movers and shakers. Many of them were as conscripted as, as uh, soldiers and charioteers. Others, whole families are depicted on ancient Assyrian wall murals as being kept together. It's, you ask me, what do I attribute it to? It's supernatural, Sid. There's no other explanation. But what, what, do, what do you see on these, tell me about this wall mural. Well, these wall murals turned up where the lost tribes were found, and in the ancient Assyrian archaeological discoveries, the murals show entire legions of Assyrian armies that were not only run, but populated by Israeli charioteers, who evidently were the most successful of all. It also shows entire Israeli families, men, women, and children, kept in their indigenous groups, which leads us to believe, knowing the strong faith of Judaism and the need to keep their culture pure, that we have not only supernatural evidence, but every logical reason to believe that they would have preserved their culture. Now, in many cases, said the video shows something so shocking, so phenomenally awesome. In many cases, they don't even know why they're doing the ancient Hebrew customs. They just do it they because just, of tradition, yes. but they don't know, they, they just know my father did it and his, his father, father did it. His father did it for how many thousands of years. However, when you open the Old Testament, the Torah, and read, they are the traditions commanded by Moses. I, I, I don't know about you, but I find this phenomenal that after 2,700 years, a group of people did not assimilate they're away from Israel. They're away from no temple. They're, they're away from uh, animal sacrifices. Uh, they're away from any, surrounded by uh, different nationalities and, and, and different religions. And for 2,700 years, they maintained their Jewish identity, which the scriptures predict as long as there is a sun and moon and stars, there'll be a physical Jew on the face of this earth. I can't wait to hear more. Don't go away. Hello, YouTube Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. Hello, I'm Sid Roth, your investigative reporter, and I'm here with Rick Amato. And we're talking about the latest event that is more mind-boggling than the fact that Israel after thousands of years of being nothing but dust, became a modern Jewish nation, God predicted. But the next most important event of the predictions of God that have come to pass in our lifetime, Rick Amato, explain. The, the lost tribes of Israel is the greatest fulfillment of prophecy or predictions by God of what will happen in the future since the Jews became a nation in 1948. Like you said, Sid, it's illogical that there should right. be an Israel. Hitler, uh, the Holocaust, he killed how many millions and millions of Jews? Six million Six. or more. It's incredible to believe that Israel would be a nation. As mind-boggling as that is, 
Something is happening at the dawn of the 21st century that is even more mind-boggling, and that is that a team of investigative journalists like yourself, Simka Yakobovich and Elliot Halpern, neither one of them Christians, neither one of them believers in Jesus Christ, but both people who love Israel, uh, Simka is an Orthodox Jew, they have discovered the lost tribes of Israel and in fact are actively involved with other Jewish groups in returning these people to the land of Israel at the same time that the Arab conflict over Jerusalem is heating up. There's a major collision there coming and whether you're an Orthodox who believe the Messiah is coming for the first time, a Christian who believe it will be Hamashiach or the Christ or the Messiah's second coming, both camps agree he's going to make a public appearance there real soon. And even if you're an unbeliever, if you don't even believe in God, if you just know about 300,000 Arabs marching on Israel with the possibility of weapons of mass destruction at their disposal and the lost tribes of Israel now being discovered and returning to Jerusalem, which we know they have weapons of mass destruction, you better hope there's a Messiah. That's what I tell all unbelievers. I you say, know, you better hope there's one. You know, the first time I began reading about the restoration of these lost tribes had to do with the Ethiopian Jews. Right. That, the, that many, the, the rabbis in Israel said, you're not Jewish. Then they kind of changed their mind. Tell me how that all came to well, be. Well, one of the things that we have to remember is that though to humans like you and I, this appears sudden and mm -hmm. startling, God has the very hairs of every Jewish person who's le ever lived. He has the hairs of their head all numbered. He knows where every one of them was born and lived. So, and a day to him is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is a day. So in other words, what that means is, though to us living at this time in history, in the time-space grid, it appears suddenly, God's been doing this faithfully because God is faithful. And he's been doing this over a period of years. He began this journey back to Israel when Simcha Yakobov, saw the verse in the Bible that said it shall come to pass and if you if you know the Old Testament it's in the book of Zephaniah and it says I will gather the daughter of my dispersed from Ethiopia and so he went to Ethiopia and he did research and he studied and discovered that these were descendants of the Queen of Sheba that Solomon had it impregnated and they practiced Judaism. They were, they were Jews, but just like now, some people said they weren't sure and they were too busy eating and drinking and having all the fun to realize what God's program was. So Simca just produced this documentary and just like this video, it got the attention of the chief rabbi and before you know it. Well, I'll let you tell the rest of the story. The Ethiopian airlift took place and, and how many Jews in one day on Saturday were exported from Ethiopia to Israel. Now, if you go to Israel, you see many black Israeli soldiers carrying Uzis, carrying machine guns. They, they've not only come back to Israel, they're defending their country. What about the Jews in Afghanistan? That's that, now, that is one of the most shocking things of all. The Bible talks about an ancient river, the Havar River, and it talks about a pass. Well, what Simca did was he just looked at, at where these Jews were supposed to have gone and he found that they were on the Khyber Pass. Now, what we know is that Russia tried to invade Afghanistan and were humiliated. Uh, you and I both have been to Russia many times and we know the most decimated war veterans on earth are the Russian Afghan war vets. I mean, they were destroyed by the fierceness of these warriors. Well, it turns out that, that this Khyber Pass has um, the lost tribes of Israel. Well, there's another tribe. They're called the Pathans in Afghanistan. And the Pathans in Afghanistan are the fierce, the most fierce warriors. They're the most feared warriors. Well, it turns out that when Simca went to investigate them, he said, how come you're, you're supposed to be Muslims, but you also practice a form of Judaism? And, and they said, no, no, we're not Muslims because we don't just have the Koran. We have another book, the Pukta. And he said, well, what's the Pukta? He said, we have this another book, it's the Pukta. And he said, well, well let me show it to you. It's the Old Testament. So, so through his investigation, and the video goes into much more detail, I'm just a simple preacher of the cross. I don't know all the details, but I know that he found along the Khyber Pass and 
among the Pathons in Afghanistan, though, which would explain why they're so fierce. The Israeli Air Force pilots are the best Air Force pilots. God gifted the Jews with this enormous ability, this warrior-like ability. Well, God also preserved them along the Khyber Pass, the Pathons in Afghanistan. By the way, that raises an amazing question. The Arabs and the Jews are fighting for so many thousands of years. Won't they be amazed to find out through the Pathons, they're brothers. They're, they're, they're practicing side now, by side. Now the Pathons, uh, do you know what tribe they're from? Uh, Simca goes on into detail and explains in the video, and I'm not exactly sure of the details, but I think they may be, I'm not sure, so I think they may be Ephraim. I think they have something to do with Ephraim. Are you getting this? The 10 lost tribes, as they so aptly said, they're not lost. They've been found, preserved, 2,700 years. Some of the fiercest warriors on the face of this earth are from the lost tribes of Israel. They're starting to return back to Israel. Israel is a Jewish nation. How do you account for this? Good question. Be back right after this word. Hello, Sid Roth, your investigative reporter. I want to go into the control room and preview who our guest is next week. Janie Duvall, who's up next week? Sid, you'll be interviewing a man by the name of Don Paul, and he was rescued by an angel when he, when he was 12 years old. You know, the thing that amazes me, Janie, is that this man has the ability to see into the invisible world. He not only sees angels, but he sees demons. And the thing that I'm so excited about is he has learned how to, if you can get the authority of these spiritual beings in the visible world, you can stop different attacks from happening to you and different bad things from happening to you. And he has found that not only can he see them, but he has authority over them. Well, he's even seen visions of things before they happen. For instance, he had a vision of a boy who was about to die, and he only had two days to live, and that he was going to pray for him, and that he would be healed. A few minutes after seeing this vision, and the vision is like a movie screen in front of him, he got a phone call of a boy a, a, a woman called and she was talking to him about a boy who had leukemia and he only had two days to live just like the vision and a miracle happened. I'll tell you something. I believe that this is, we're going to have miracles happen when people just watch this particular show. Thank you, Janie. I'm back here with Rick Amato and we're talking about probably the most amazing thing that has happened based on the predictions in the Jewish scriptures in our lifetime. What was the most amazing thing was Israel becoming a modern day nation, just as the Bible said this would happen. But today, there's something that has just outdated that. The ancient rabbi said the lost tribes would not be lost. After 2,700 years, they would be preserved and they would return to a modern day nation called Israel. Now, Rick Amato, you have a friend that is a traditional Orthodox Jew that read this in the scriptures and went on an investigative report. How many of the 10 lost tribes has he located? He, I believe that he, his assertion is that he has found them all. And my assertion is I've held this video up in seminaries, in some of the major religious institutions of North America, some of the most conservative eschatological critics, and that's just a big word that means the study of the end of the world, yes. the study of the last days. And these are, been, are my words. They were my words to them. They're my words to you and your audience today. If you watch this video, first of all, the hair is going to stand up on the back of your neck. But if you watch it, you're going to have to answer this question. If these are not the lost tribes after 2,700 years, that's a long time. Who are they? 
how do you explain this, these indigenous people groups, and that means just people groups that have isolated themselves from all the culture around them, that's Jewish, and practice the laws of Moses. How do you explain nine million Hindus, a million Muslims, and this little group of 5,000 people with the Star of David waving their flag, and having these supernatural experiences in the last 20 years where their ancient elders and tribal leaders are having visions and dreams saying that the great spirit of God is telling them, go back to Jerusalem, go back to Jerusalem. If it's not them, then who is it and how do you explain this? And not only is God telling them to go back to Jerusalem, they're going back to Jerusalem. Fulfillment of these ancient prediction, something, something supernatural is really up. Rick, tell me one more of the lost tribes that was found. I think, I think one of the greatest things, you know, rather than just say about one of the lost tribes, I think one of the most amazing things that I saw in the video that shocked me the most was in India where these Jewish people, and that's who my heart is especially endeared to these people in India, they were practicing a ritual of eating uh, ashes with their food. And they didn't know why they were eating the ashes with their food, except that their people had sinned against God, and they were commanded to eat these ashes with their food until Shova came. And, and Shova is just, Shilova is actually the word they used, Shilova was sort of a mutagenesis of two words. One, Shiloh, which is an ancient Hebrew word, which means the Messiah, and Ova, which was some strange derivative of Jehovah or Yahweh. So Messiah Yahweh came. So what happened was there was this aberration down through these thousands of years. The language changed. It sort of mutated. It was born again. It changed again. It was mutated. But it held on to the promise that Yahweh will send the Messiah. Yahweh the Messiah will come and we will return to Jerusalem. And when he does, then we can stop eating the ashes. Well, if you read the Old Testament, it's in the Bible. They were commanded to do that. So again, the words changed, the faces changed, the culture changed, the 10 tribes of Israel were scattered, but God was faithful to preserve his word and his people, and he's gonna bring them back. They're gonna go home. Did, did you catch this? They eat, they don't even understand exactly why, but with their meat, they eat ashes because they know they've been involved in some sort of sin and they have to eat these ashes until Shiloh or the Messiah comes. And they're getting dreams and visions and it's uh, to go back to Israel. <laughs> I, I have to pose that same question to you. How do you account? How do you account for these things to happen? Did you know that the Messiah says he has the exact place that you should live. He has every hair on your head numbered. Not two birds fall to the ground without him being personally aware of it. And of how much more value, of how much more value are you than the sparrow? Maybe no one's ever said this to you. But our Messiah says you have worth, you have value, you have a destiny on your life. And you may say, yeah, but it's kind of passed me by, or <laughs> I don't know. I know one thing, that you're watching me right now because God is trying to get your attention and saying, I love you. I love you. I have something better for you. I have a destiny for you. You must not eat ashes, but you must repent of sin and believe the blood of Jesus washed away your sin and say, Jesus is my Lord. Say that right now. Say that right now. You'll see.
He's real. He's there. He loves you. He really does.